Assume that females have pulse rates that are normally distributed with a mean of 74 beats per minute. So that's our mu. Mu is the mean. And a standard deviation of sigma equals 12.5 minutes. So sigma is our standard deviation. Good stuff. Complete parts A through C below. So part A. If one adult female is randomly selected, find the probability that her pulse rate is less than 80 beats per minute. So we have one female, and we want the probability that her pulse rate, so we'll let x be her pulse rate, is less than 80 beats per minute. That's it. So now we'll just go to StatCrunch and get the answer. So you click on question help, and you go to StatCrunch. I'll detach this so it's easier to see. We go to stat, calculators, and then you go to normal. The mean is 74. Type that in, 74. The standard deviation is 12.5, and then less than 80. Now, there is no less than choice, but for the normal distribution, it is the same, right? Less than is the same as less than or equal to for the normal distribution. So everything looks okay, we click compute. There it is, uh, 0.6844, I think it's four decimals. 0.6844, let's find out, I'm pretty sure it's four, let's look. Uh, yeah, four decimals, usually it is four decimals. 0.6844, good job. If 25 adult females are randomly selected, find the probability that they have pulse rates with a mean less than 80 beats per minute. Okay, B. This one's a little bit different. So here we're told 25 adult females are selected. So N is equal to 25. Find the probability that they have pulse rates with the mean less than. So probability. So we're looking at the mean weight of these 25 women. So X bar is the average weight of the 25 women. So it's the sample mean, right? 25 is the sample size. So we have 25 females. So the average weight of the sample is X bar. We want that to be less than 80 beats per minute. So because we're asked a question about the average, right? A, a good key is your N is bigger than one, right? So whenever you have a number bigger than one, it's always gonna be X bar. So whenever that happens, you have to first compute the new standard deviation, so sigma over square root of n. This is the standard deviation that you'll put into StatCrunch, right? So in part A, we just use the sigma they give us, right? But part B, the question's about an average, right? And you know that because the n is bigger than one. So whenever that happens, you always have to do this first. So sigma is 12.5, n is 25. So let's put this in the calculator and see what we get. So on, beautiful stuff. So 12.5 divided by the square root of 25. So the square root is this orange key, so I have to hit second first. So 2.5, good stuff, so 2.5. So that's, that's the new standard deviation, that's not the answer. That's the standard deviation that we have to enter into StatCrunch, okay? So I'm gonna go back to StatCrunch, question help, StatCrunch. Yay, it's still open. So we go to stat, calculators, normal. And it's still 80, so 80 is the same. Um, but the mean is 74 still, so that, that's, that hasn't changed. The standard deviation has changed though, so instead of 12.5, we're gonna use 2.5. That's the whole point of the question, right? So in part A, we use 12.5. Part B, they gave us n equals 25, so we have uh, an average Right, the question is about an average, so we first have to compute the new standard deviation. So important. Click compute. There it is, 0.9918. So 0.9918. Let's type it in. 0 0.9918. 0 0.99, whoops, 9918. Okay, good job. Now there's a follow-up question. It says, why can the normal distribution be used in part B? even though the sample size does not exceed 30. Okay, before we read the choices, let me explain this. So n is 25. So if n is bigger than 30, then x bar is approximately normal. So you can use the normal distribution, right? 
In this case, n is 25, though. So, so that, that rule doesn't apply, right? So the rule is, the rule is if n is bigger than 30, then x bar is approximately normal. That's a consequence of what's called the central limit theorem. So you can, you can call it the central limit theorem if you like. So CLT says if n is bigger than 30, then x bar is approximately normal. Well, in this case, n is 25. So what does that mean? That means nothing, right? <laughs> that means you can't use this. It doesn't mean it's not normal. It just means you can't use this. This only goes one way. If it's bigger than 30, then this happens. So the central limit theorem does not apply in this problem. So the question is, why can we use the normal distribution? It's because in the original question, they told us that everything was normal. If you remember, if x is normal, so is x bar. So when your population is normal, the averages are also normal. So in this problem, it told us that the heights of pulse rates were no the heights of pulse rates, sorry, that the pulse rates were normal. So the averages are normal. So because it says normal in the problem, everything is okay. So in every single homework question, one of two things is going to happen. It will either say normal in the problem, in which case life is good, you can use stat crunch for everything, or n will be bigger than 30, in which case you can use stack crunch anyways because you have the central limit theorem. So in this case, you would say since the original population has a normal distribution, the distribution of sample means that this one here, A. And that's it.